grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to see everybody here this morning. And as we begin this morning, there's just a few announcements. Um, the nitpickers, are the nitpickers going to, I meant to ask this earlier, are the nitpickers going to meet during November or are they going to take a break? Okay, they will meet then on Tuesday and decide what they want to do uh, for the month of November and December. All right, so you got that announcement out of the way. Here's Wednesday night Bible study. We're in the book of Daniel. We're going on to uh, chapter 7. This begins the visions that Daniel has and the interpretations of these prophetic <clears throat> dreams that he has. And um, uh, we're going to be looking at each one of those from chapter 7 to 12, and if you'd like to join us, we invite you to do so, 6.30 here on Wednesday night. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what happened in October. In October, we collected money for the uh, Brazos um, Food Bank. Um, we were very blessed that we collected $372 to take to the, uh, to the food bank, but we also have about uh, 10 sacks of groceries. There's a couple more at the house that I have that uh, are going to go to the food bank, and we want to thank everybody for contributing and uh, keeping that uh, that uh, 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 blessing before uh, your, your, your yourselves and, and the community, and so we want to thank you. Now, during the month of November, we are going to be collecting for Habitat for Humanity, and as you all know, this is an organization that helps first-time home builder or homeowners to build an affordable house. Um, and uh, families are chosen by a, a whole list of factors. But one of the myths that has been always handed around is that Habitat takes people homes for free. Well, nothing could be really further from the truth. Each family that is picked to build a home, um, they have to put in 300 sweat equity hours on their home and then more hours on working on somebody else's home that has gotten a home from Habitat. The other thing is, is that they have to attend finance classes, they have to attend home repair classes, and uh, as I said, you know, that, that is something that a lot of homeowners, I wish they did with everybody, because I sure could use a, 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 a lesson in home repairs, but I think that's a worthwhile program, and so we're going to be collecting during the month of November for Habitat. So if you would like to in our second blessing, it will either be passed around by our kids or, and I wish James were here because, so we need to get James here at least one of these Sundays for um, for Habitat. I think we can probably get a thousand dollars after that kid. And I will warn you that if James is here, you better give him a dollar because he'll stand there until you do. So just saying, I'm going to let you know that right now. Okay. Uh, are there any other announcements to be made this morning? Well, um, we have two prayer shawls that are going around um, for Dr. Bill or William Marr. Uh, some of you may know it. He's an ophthalmologist here in town. Uh, right after his retirement, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And uh, he has gone through uh, chemotherapy and radiation and he finished that, they uh, operated on the tumor, and he goes back in two weeks now to find out the prognosis. So let's keep him in our prayers. And the other one is for Candace uh, Cooper Lamb. Uh, Candace has been having some dizzy spells and, and uh, uh, is it, ver did you tell me vertigo issues? Uh, sure. She, she had tests done and she failed. She had tests done and she failed them. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing, okay. Oh, it didn't tell him anything. Oh. Nothing else? Oh, my goodness. Well, let's keep our, uh, we're going to send her a prayer shawl because she will still be having these uh, little uh, moments. So let's uh, keep her in our thoughts and prayers also. Uh, and there's a prayer shawl that you can sign for her. Now, the other thing is today is All Saints Sunday. And in, during our communion service, we will be celebrating the lives of those saints that have gone on to the church triumphant. And so if you have a name that you would like to lift up during that time, uh, there will be a time in which I call you to, uh, to say those names aloud. Or those ones that are on your heart that you still would like to remember on this All Saints Day. Now there's something to be captured in this moment of worship that we can't experience in any other time or in any other situation. So let's be alive what God would have us experience in the here and now. 
Let's worship God. I invite you to please stand as we sing. Oh, wait a second. We have uh, a birthday I know of, and I thought it would be fun. Well, Linda, do you have your phone? Yes, okay, you're going to come up here and you're going to stand in for your son and our son uh, because <laughs> Ethan turns 31 and he always, he, he got mad at us last year because we just didn't quite remember his birthday, his 30th birthday. We did, but it was a little bit later. So what we're going to do is we're going to call him. Oh. And, uh, you know, it's only, what, let's see, it's 9 o'clock here, so it's 7 o'clock? No. Six o'clock. Yeah, it's close enough. He's had enough sleep. He got an extra hour last night, right? You agree? All right, does anybody else have a birthday this week? All right, well, we're going to do this without him being here, but I think it's important so that he knows that his mother and father haven't forgotten him being way up there. In life. <coughs> so, uh, you want to come over here? I see another dog. Okay, we owe the bear. We owe the bear. All right. So, yes. Oh, thank you. And, and we'll have to say that. Here, you speak. Yes. All right. Let's see. That's right, I, I've been forward to my children. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. So that's from all your fellows brothers and sisters in Christ at Alexander, okay? Uh, <laughs> Go back to sleep. <laughs> All right. There. I got to get with my child. I told you. He was born at 5.55 in the morning on the Saturday of opening hunting day. So I've always had a grudge against him for that. <laughs> All right, let's please stand. As we sing together our secret song, Come Christian Strikes, number 158 in your red and notes.
how to love like you. Lord, we just give you thanks for their lives. But as we come this morning, we open our hearts and minds and souls to you that you may come in and transform us into the church and people you need us to be in this community and in our world. And help us, O oh Lord, to go forth in boldness to speak and proclaim your word through our actions and through our words and through our thoughts. Now, Lord, guide us by your Holy Spirit in this time as we worship you with all praise and honor and glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and let us all say, Amen. For all the saints, number 711, found in your uh, red hymnals, and we'll sing all the verses. <clears throat> Peace 
will abound in the community of faith, or C, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits, or D, Jesus will come and set things right. How many say it's A, uh, that there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Uh, B, uh, peace will abound in the community of faith. Okay, C, some will abandon the faith and follow, uh, follow deceiving spirits. Anybody? Well, C is the correct answer. People will follow deceiving, abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. That's in verse 1. Okay, what does Paul say about everything God created? Does he say, hey, everything is wonderful and beautiful in God's eyes? Or B, everything is good and to be received with thanksgiving. C, everything needs to be examined closely. Or D, everything is rotten since Adam and Eve. All right, how do we say it's A? Everything is wonderful and beautiful in God's eyes. Okay, B, everything is, ah, very good, Picky guy. Everything is good and to be received with thanksgiving. That's in verse 4. Paul says to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because of what? Because A, you're a Christian. B, because you're good looking and better looking than him. D, that, or C, you're a good preacher. Or D, you're young. B. What? B. D. D, you're correct. Thank you, D, thank you. That is... Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. Okay, your bonus question this week. What did Paul command Timothy to do with his life? Watch your life and doctrine closely, A, or B, be free-spirited and let God lead you. C, work daily for the kingdom it is near, or D, look to God as the source of your strength. What did Paul command Timothy to do with his life? Anybody say, A, watch your life and doctrine closely? There you go. Thank you. Did you have your Bible open? <laughs> All right. There you go. Next week, chapter 5. So get ready. Put your thinking cap on and get ready for that, um, that quiz next week. All right. Um, we go this week to our prayer list and we have those um, uh, that have been given to me uh, for prayers. Uh, Buddy uh, McGowan uh, was a name given to us last week. I don't know if I spelled his name. It's G-O-W-N. W-N. Okay, thank you. Uh, for Buddy McGowan family, well, let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, let's go through our prayers for healing. Um, it's good to see Sharon here. So thank you, Sharon. Good to see you. I'm glad to know you're doing well. And it's your liver. Huh? He said, what am I, chopped liver? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, it's good to see you. And it's, uh, it's, hey, don't worry about it. That's what they say to me every time they say, oh, well, look, balloon is here. And I'm just like, okay. Am I invisible? Okay. So um, yeah. I apologize. Oh. All right. Let's go to those who need our healing this week. Uh, for Dr. Dave. He's very ill. He's taking his chemo and he's really Okay, so let's keep uh, Dr. Dave Rosenberg in our prayers as he is going through chemo. And chemo is very stressful in the body and everything, so let's keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, for Glenn, how's he doing? Uh, there's really no change in um, his treatment right now, and he's. Um, Pretty much bedridden, so he's not, you know, able to get up and do a lot of things. Okay, so let's keep both Dr. Dave and Glenn in our prayers as they're going through their treatments and, and just um, their cancers. Uh, let's see, for Sandra's wife. Okay, for Christian Wakefield Rose, and she celebrated her 40th birthday this past yep. week. And she has her last chemo treatment tomorrow, and if all goes well, they're going to do one more PET scan, but it's looking really good. Wonderful. I'm so thankful to hear.
through that. Uh, Catherine Johnson can actually be taken off. She's back home and uh, doing well, so let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Dr. Cliff? Okay, let's continue our prayers for him, for Darlene Beard, for Pauline Jones, for Amber Shook. Do we have any updates? Uh, she got to ring the bell. Oh, she did. So she has finished with her treatment. So let's give it, let's move that to Joy's. Yeah. So we are so thankful. And the baby's doing well? I think he's growing just like he ought to be. Okay, very good. Uh, for Mark Des, continue prayers for him as a Try to figure out his back bottle. Um, for Randy Lyons, for Linda K. Johnson, for Elaine Peters, Travis Piper, for Peter Moreno. I've not done an update on him. Uh, for Martha Kozlowski, Martha is, her energy is just waning from time to time because of the chemo treatments and stuff. And so uh, she asks for prayers for her. Uh, for Susan uh, Anzrasek, Susan passed away this week. Oh, okay. Let's move that up to reading to Susan and drops of family. Prayers for her uh, family to be comforted. And even for Ed, because this was his uh, administrative assistant. And though they didn't work a uh, whole long together, it's still uh, a sad moment. So let's keep him in our thoughts and prayers too. Uh, for Bubba Peters. Bubba Peters is still in rehab, but he's getting ready to go home, and so he's doing much better. For Ed Kozlowski, he is uh, at home recuperating still, but um, there was no real major damage or anything, so um, let's keep him in there. For Elaine Hester, uh, just, I didn't talk to her this week. okay, okay, let's keep her in our prayers too. Uh, she's still able to drive, but uh, let's just uh, let's keep her in our prayers. For Ed and Sharon Carson, both uh, Ed presents for uh, uh, his uh, administrative assistant, and for Sharon, many prayers of healing for her. Uh, for Candace Cooper Lamb, uh, do they know if they're going to do anything more at the moment? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's keep her. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay, well, you know. Okay, well, that's a good thing then. Okay, that she failed the test is a good thing, and her doctor knows what to do now, so let's keep her in our thoughts and prayers as she makes an appointment with him. And then for Jean Presnell? Well, she did remember the how, the how she fell. She actually tripped. Oh, okay. So, to me, that's better. Yes. And um, we, she had an appointment with her regular doctor, that last week anyway, and he, she passed all of her blood work and all of that good stuff. So, you know, she he says she's doing okay. He's going to add a medicine, but that's it. Okay. Um, so let's continue our prayers for her, for Chris Shook, for Susie Metters, for Joanne Johnson, for John Jean uh, Reno. Um, I want to change this prayer that I have on here. From the war in Israel and the um, the war in Ukraine, I want us, as we discussed in uh, in the Bible study this morning, we're to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem and praying for the peace to be settled between Hamas and Israel. So, and we're to be working for it. Now, how we do that? We we didn't come up with a solution. Perhaps if we begin to pray for peace in these engagements, God will hear our pleas and cries. So let us pray for the peace of Israel and Hamas and pray for the peace of Ukraine. Are there others that you would like to remember this morning? God knows those prayers that are most precious to you that you can only whisper before his throne of grace in times of silent meditation. <clears throat> Well, let us take a moment then and offer God our prayers that are deep in our hearts and souls. Let's pray. Mm -hmm.
We thank you for your presence in our life and for your spirit guiding us through each day, lending us strength, lending us comfort, lending us hope. Lead us, O oh Lord, into the ways of peace that bring glory to your kingdom and new life to all. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who have lost loved ones through death and entered the church triumphant. And we pray, gracious God, that you would comfort their families and surround them with your angels to hold them up in their time of sorrow and to lead them from the darkness to the light that they may find comfort in your arms and peace with each other and with you. And Lord, we most assuredly believe that you hold their loved ones in your arms of grace. And so, Lord, give these families the assurance that they are there with you. Help them to remember with joy their loved ones. And may they come to a new understanding of your life in the midst of theirs. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ for those who need your healing, Lord. And for these we have named aloud, we give you thanks, Lord, for their lives. But we ask that you would be with them in this time of illness, that you would help them to know your presence and to experience your peace. We pray that your healing spirit might make them whole in this time and in your way. And help their families and us accept what those healings may look like. For they may come in glorious death. But Lord, we entrust their lives to you knowing that you are working for good in each of them. Strengthen them in their weakness. Grant them courage in their uncertainty. May they find peace at the end of each of their days. And undergird their families with your strength, Lord, as they journey through illness with their ones. We pray for those who need your presence, Lord, and we especially pray for the peace of Israel and the Palestinians, for Ukraine and Russia. Lord, we pray that you would intercede with your Holy Spirit and that they might find a peaceful resolution. And though these conflicts have gone on for years, Lord, some even eons, we know that when we as a people pray together, you are a powerful God who answers our prayers. And so it is, Lord, we pray for peace, peace in our world, Peace in our state, peace in our community, peace within our church, peace within our lives. Lead us to that peace, O Heavenly Father, and grant us to be the peacemakers in the world today. Now, gracious God, help us to pray the prayer you taught your disciples, that as we pray the prayer, your prayer, it may become a part of us, living and breathing within us, and transform us into the likeness of you. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 769. There you will find the 34th Psalm, 769. And will you please stand as we read response? The 34th I would bless the Lord at all times. 
God's praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out, and the Lord heard, and saved them out of all their troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God and delivers them. Oh, the taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear God have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his words. Thanks be to God and let us all say, Amen. Amen. All right, I invite you now to turn in your Red Pew Bibles, and in your Red Pew Bibles to page 1501. 1501, you'll find Matthew, the fifth chapter, and this is what is commonly known as the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. This morning I'm reading to you from a uh, passage to you from that first part of the uh, Sermon on the Mount. It's called the Beatitudes. Some of you may know them by heart, but my prayer is that we can look at them in a different way this morning as we go and read God's Word found in Matthew 5 verses 1 through 12. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, saying, or came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hurt hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they, cross, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God, and let us all say, Amen. I invite you to be seated. As I mentioned a moment ago, I want you to look at the Beatitudes in a little bit different way this morning. And so as you look at them, I want you to think about the present blessing or being presently blessed and a future hope. That is what I have found in my reading of these, even though I have studied these scriptures for almost 30 years and longer, really. But I've always found it interesting how it begins, blessed are you. And I got to tell you, sometimes some of the blessings that I I just I don't be wrong, I don't see the blessing. I got to tell you that for my example, it was my truck accident some 42 years ago. Now, the accident sent my life into a tailspin and shot me off into a new trajectory of life. I had my sights set on being a professional football player or getting involved in football coaching in some way or another. In fact, I was on the pathway to get my degree in history. I love the facts that about historical events and love the study of the past. And for once, my college career and grades reflected my enthusiasm. I had a 3.5. See, my rationale was that my first football coach was a history teacher. And that's how I came up with the idea of becoming a history teacher. And so he was the one who gave me the thought that I could be a history teacher and a football coach. But such are the thoughts of a full-hearted dreamer. 
who thinks they've got life all figured out. Now, I know there's no rationale or reasoning, reasonable thought process about what I wanted it or what I desired. But it all came to a screeching halt on April the 15th, 1981, when the truck I drove in a deer. My world and my future were turned upside down. You see, I had to drop out of school because of the surgeries and rehab that I would go to for the next 18 months. My grades plummeted because I forgot that I had to finish the incomplete courses that the dean had set aside for me. And all the while, as my world came crushing around me, telling me that I would no longer be able to run and be lucky if I walked, my mother kept saying to me, look at all the blessings. My mother was an eternal optimist and reminded me that there was hope in every circumstance you faced. But silently I kept thinking, what blessing? Are you kidding me, Mom? I struggled over many years with this so-called blessing. But now as I reflect on the events of 42 years ago, I now understand the blessing that I've been given and the future hope that continues to present itself to me through different experiences in ministry. I'm going to talk about that more about that in a moment. This moment's text is a, so familiar to us, and I can imagine that many of you, as I read it, could recite it in your hearts. And as I said, I have preached on the Beatitudes at least 10 times in the last 30 years of ministry. These words of Jesus are the reminder to the uh, are reminders to the hearer that the midst of the present, there is always going to be a hopeful future. And that is not always so easy to see. Would you agree? When you and I are in the midst of these blessings, sometimes it's unimaginable that there is a future hope. Yet. That is what Jesus is going to teach us about present blessings. I want you to join me as we explore Jesus' teaching and of understanding life situations as present blessings that have a future hope. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you as blank slates, clearing our hearts, minds, and souls of all the impediments of life. We offer to you our time that we may be fully present at this moment, receive your word, and that we may be transformed by those words. Holy Spirit, guide us into a deeper and richer understanding of who Christ is, that we may be filled with his joy, hope, and mercy, forgiveness, and love, and offer it to all. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the church say, Amen. I want to begin by what I understand the word to be blessed. Um, it can be actually translated as happy. Happy are you when you, you know, happy are you when you are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you for those who mourn. I'm sorry, folks. Um, there's another part of the definition that says to be strict, to be supremely blessed. Uh, how many of you feel really supremely blessed when uh, there are those around you who are um, persecuting you? Do you find yourself being extremely blessed? I would say probably not. Or another definition is to be finally well off. So you're well off when you're merciful because you'll be shown mercy. You're well off when you're pure in heart. For they will see the you're, you're, you're well off when those uh, when the peacemakers for you call the sons of God. Yet, as we see, when some of these blessings come, it's quite difficult. If not anything, it's downright impossible. But here in Matthew's gospel, Jesus begins 
his earthly ministry by preaching on the mountainside oh, to his disciples ah. and the people. So I want you to imagine the scene of Jesus going out to the mountainside. And I want you to think about it in terms of what it might have looked like here on our property. We're one of the highest points in Brazos County, right? And so Jesus comes and we follow him out here. Where do we sit? Where do we go? We probably are sitting on the side of the meadows, right, that look down. And Jesus begins to preach. And this grassy meadow is filled with voices and people yearning to listen for the word of God coming from this new Judean rabbi. We, like them, are interested in what he's going to say and how he's going to say it and what new word he's going to give us that may actually give us hope. Now, we're sitting around by our families and we can probably wave to each other because we'll be sitting in close proximity, but there will also be strangers sitting around us. We're all there to glimpse this new teacher. And then comes the appointed time. Blessed are you in the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who mourn, for they will comfort. And blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are uh, persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are people when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For the same way they persecuted, they prosecuted, persecuted, excuse me, the prophets who are before you. Can you hear the question marks coming up in people's minds? Me. But if I'm poor in spirit, I'm to be blessed. Let me tell you something, folks. When you're poor in spirit and you're struggling with depression, self-esteem issues, feelings that you're not good enough or adequate within the world or within anything, can you call yourself blessed? And then you think about the idea of blessed are the, those who mourn. That's the one that I think most people struggle with. Especially after the death of a loved one or a child or a parent or a grandparent, an aunt or a cousin, good friend. We are all acquainted with death. And yet, do we count it as a blessing? Some are mourning the death of a marriage. Some are mourning the rebellious child. But there are another host of things that come up where people mourn. But do they count it as a blessing? They, like us, have been touched by grief. And to see our way through the mire of that grief is not always easy. Even though we may proclaim Jesus as Lord, sometimes we wonder, oh Lord, where are you? Even now. Blessed are those who hunger or who are meek. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they will hunger. I don't know. I've known many meek people in my life, and sometimes they don't feel like they're blessed because they want to say something, but they don't. They don't find a voice. They stay inside their shell. I fear. Yesterday, Mark and I attended a meeting at the Weston Foundation, <coughs> and a young lady was asked to speak and tell us about her experience at the Wesley Foundation. And they asked her to stand up, and you could tell that she was visibly shaken. And she says, can I just sit down? And 
course, they said yes. And she goes, I suffer from anxiety, and I don't like to speak to difficult people. And then she recounted her story about coming to the Wesley Foundation. But what I found interesting was afterwards, I said, you did the most terrifying thing that every woman in the Americans faces. And she said, what is that? I said, you spoke in front of a group of people. It's the number one fear for women. I don't know why. She had anything to say. But she, did. but she did. There's the future hope. And there were those who were merciful. Is it always easy to be merciful to people who have wronged you? <coughs> who have done something so vile and so mean? Do you have a heart for forgiveness? It's hard be merciful towards somebody who hurts you or hurts someone in your family. Some are trying to be peacemakers. But is it always easy to be a peacemaker? We find that to be one of the most difficult things to do. As a church leader and as a church pastor, I know that trying to lead people into it Resolved peace can sometimes take a lot of extra time and energy. And yes, some preachers like myself throw up their arms and say, what's the use? And still others in our passage are being persecuted. Blessed are you who are persecuted. They're being persecuted by the chief priests, the Romans, and even within society because they don't fit the norm. And because of this, their insults hurled their way because their life choices are not what they would choose. And so, and Jesus ends this profound thing, this profound lesson with the words, rejoice and be glad. Take a breath and breathe that in for just a moment. Can you rejoice and be glad in the midst of your trials? That's what he's calling them to do. And here's the future hope that he gives them. For the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So when you're poor in spirit and you are struggling and you turn to God and say, I have no other place to turn and I can't turn left or right, I can't go backwards, all I can do is turn towards you. And what does God offer you? He offers you the kingdom. The hope of that kingdom. Now about those who mourn. Our sorrows will be turned to joy. They won't come instantaneously. Sometimes we will struggle with them. But the future hope is that we will be comforted. We will find peace and we will find joy again. Not in the same way, perhaps, but in a new way. For those who are meek, just remember that you may be shut out of saying something now, but in God's kingdom, you will speak on. I know one of the meekest friends I have says the most profound things because he doesn't let his mouth or his words. He chooses them wisely. He's the E.F. Hutton of my life. When he speaks, I listen. There will come a day when we thirst for righteousness for wanting everything to be right, not only with each other, but in our community, in our world, and with God and creation. And you see, when we find that peace, we'll be filled, that's the future hope. Keep working towards it, keep striving for it, because you will be filled. If 
you're a peacemaker, remember that just because it fails one time doesn't mean it's going to fail always. Keep striving for that. Keep striving to be a peacemaker to all. And when you're, up, when you're persecuted because of Christ, and you're accused and insulted, and people speak all things against you, evil things against you because of Christ, you are to rejoice. To rejoice because, guess what? In the world's eyes, you may be the most vile and ugly person, but to God, you are His and claimed as His very own. There's no place that you can go that God is not, and no place where God won't save you from. Who are the people in your life who showed you blessings, or showed that moment that they said, oh, just count your blessings? I told you a moment ago, I would tell you a little bit about what my mom saw and what uh, I discovered over these last 42 years. First and foremost, my mother said, you're not dead. With a vehicle that had rolled over five times, I should have been thrown out. But I wasn't. You, you can walk on two legs, and you don't have to wear a prosthesis. You get to sit down and have a holiday meal with us. Some may never have that. blessings that come to us and we don't recognize them nor do we acknowledge them. Here God says through Christ and speaks a word of a future hope for everyone. We read over this list again when you go home today. Remember somewhere in there you may find yourself. You may be struggling but lean into it. Lean into it until you find that future hope that is given to you and to all. We are blessed. We've gone through a trial in these last couple of years, but you know why? We are blessed. You know why? Because we're still here meeting in Jesus' name, loving it. Loving them for who they are in Christ, not what they are in the world. <clears throat> and when we do that, we must consider ourselves. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and let the church say, Amen. I invite you to look inside the insert in your bulletin. There you will find our communion liturgy. And I invite you to please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah. God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your ending hymn singing, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of our and mine, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant. 
by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, Christ took bread. He gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and then he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and those sitting with him at table, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks to you, Almighty God, and then he gave it to those at the table with him. And he said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ is Christ is to be seated. Lord, I'm sure the Holy Spirit has gathered here, and on these gifts of bread, and wine, make them be for us, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all the saints, especially those who we name before you in our hearts this morning. This year we had only one death in the congregation, Bill Cousinal, but I'm sure there are others that you would like to remember, and we invite you to lift them up at this time. James King, Stuart Lyon, <laughs> let us continue to pray. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run it with perseverance the race we set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly reign. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever, and let the church say, Amen.
Now go forth in the name of Jesus Christ to serve him, to live, let him live through you, through your words, through your actions, through your deeds. May others come to know his grace. May you experience his peace at the end of all your days. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and let us say, Amen.
Let us pray. God of blessing, we thank you for blessing us in so many ways. And this morning, as we count our blessings, we come and return the force, the first fruits of our labors, and the very best that we have, Lord, for in you we find our being, in you we find our life. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives, and we return to you that which you have given us. So, Lord, may it be used to further your kingdom in this community and throughout the world. But, Lord, first further your kingdom in us as we live for you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and let the church say, Amen. Amen.